Hello fellow programmers, uh, today I have another C-sharp homework or exercise, uh, this is from the book C-sharp, how to program, chapter 13, exercise 3, we are going to be doing some exception handling. They want us to write a program that shows inheritance and how the uh, exception is being handled in base class and the right classes. In other words, they want us to write a program to demonstrate that the catch specifying the base class catches the right class exceptions. So we're supposed to use inheritance to create an exception base class and then various exception the right classes. Now honestly, I read the, the assignment a few times and I still am not exactly sure what I want us to do. What I think they want us to do is to create a, obviously a base class and then have a catch, so we'll try catch, and in the catch, in those uh, parentheses, we will have the base class. Uh, the base class will be calling the uh, system exception class, so it still will be a derived class from the system exception class. All right, well, let me let me demonstrate what I mean. So I created the classes. I have base exception, test class one, test test class 2 and test class 3. Now base exception class is my base class. However, it will still inherit from a system exception. Now our test class 1 will inherit from our base exception, which will ultimately, of course, since it's an inheritance, it will have access to the system exceptions as well now. And the same for test class 2, so it will inherit from base exception. And test class 3 inherits from base exception. So now we have our hierarchy, and now uh, let's do some uh, constructors. Now we will not, won't be processing anything in these classes. Again, this is just to demonstrate how, uh, uh, how, the, uh, you know, how the inheritance works with the exception handling. So, our base class will simply say uh, base exception, I'm sorry, that can be of course public, public base exception, and it will take an input, and the input will be a string that I will call message. This is the message that will be different for each of the classes, it's going to be the error message for each of the classes. Now, this is the tricky part. Well, tricky. <laughs> this message is going to be passed to the system class, to the system exception class. All right, so uh, that's our constructor for base exception class. We will get the message and turns around and te uh, takes the message and passes it to the its base class, which happens to be system exception. Now, test class one constructor. Uh, it's going to be similar in that it will take the message, it will take a string, I'll call it message again, and it will pass that message to its uh, base class. However, in this case, the, the base class is not the system class, it's the base exception class. But ultimately, that will take the message <laughs> and passes it to the system class, all right? So that's the... That's how, how it falls, that's how the variable or the argument travels in the chain of the, of the inheritance. Okay, so this is our uh, constructor for test class one, and it's going to be exactly the same for the other two. Except, of course, it's going to be test two, and this is going to be test three. So now we have our classes. And since, like I said, we don't really do anything with them, we're just going to throw exception and see how, uh, how it's being handled. So I go to my main method, and uh, we can, you know, throw some exceptions. So I will try, and I will purposefully uh, throw new, and I will, t uh, since I will test each class separately. So the first one would be, test class one. I'll throw an exception of test class one 
and the message that's the see, string message it's going to be simply error from test class one that's the message that uh, will, will distinguish it so we can follow and see uh, how the exception is being handled now this is the thing that the exercise wants us to do we, we need to put write a program to demonstrate that the catch specifying the base class catches the derived class exception in other words over in the catch we are going to catch the base exception and I'll just call it X or X1 just to again just for the visual so we can see uh, it could be just X but I'm going to be using uh, you know test class 2 as well they all could be handled with the same name you know a variable or object of the name but uh, I'm just going to distinguish them so again this is just for you to see you know how it, how it is being handled so we throw an exception of test class one, which is the derived class, but in a catch, we have the base class. And we will output uh, console dot uh, right line, and we will output the base classes message. Remember, this is a this is an exception, so exception has a built-in uh, message property that we can call. This should simply display error from test class one. Even though this is a base class, this is not the test class one, the message is being passed to the base class. Uh, I mean, the error is being passed through the base uh, exception class, and the message that is being passed is this one. So uh, let's do the same for the other two. Class two and test class three. So over here is test class two, test class three. I'm going to leave this ex one unchanged, so you can see that it, uh, these the name of the variable doesn't really matter. It can be the same for each of them. This variable only lives within the, this catch block. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't follow or it, it's not passed anywhere else. This x one is not the same as this x one. And I'll do a console that read line just to pause the screen. So now when we run it, we should we should have three messages output: error from test class one, oops, error from test class two, and test class three. So let's test that. And here it is: error from test class one, class two, and class three. Again. Each test class gets a message. We pass that message to it, but when we catch the error, we catch it with the base class. Our test class inherits from the base class, so the message is passed to that. Ultimately, the message is passed to the system class, and then we, uh, we simply call that message and write line with it. So this is uh, <laughs> maybe a little confusing, but... Uh, you know, I hope it helps you, I, uh, and I will see you next time. Take care.